hello. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. Welcome to another Tuesday Tiger class. Um, so today we will be going over the final of the final move of the five uh, steps um, that we uh, do here that form the base of our Taiji. Um, if you want to see where we've come from, if you're just tuning in today, uh, the other streams are on uh, the Liberty Athletic Club channel <clears throat> in the videos and the live videos. Um, so go ahead and check those out. Uh, we'll do a little review of some some concepts today, and then we'll finish up with the move we call Yunsho, or Cloud Hands. Um, so, as always, ask questions if you have them in the live chat uh, right here, and I will try to get to them throughout the broadcast. Um, and also, if you are watching on Facebook or some other social media platform, I will keep an eye on those here as well. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, today, uh, Yun Show, we will start off here getting warmed up with our Dao's longevity, and then we will get into the exercises. So, okay. So we're going to start off standing in our Wuji position, shoulder width, hip width. Um, when I say hip width, I mean basically this here. If your hips are wider than your shoulders, you want to go for hip width. Um, shoulders are closed. We don't want to be too wide. So we want to be kind of a nice natural standing position. Hence the term. Straighten this maybe a little bit. So that we're a little more directly on. Okay. All right, so start here. We're going to get a little bend in the knee, a little hip. Backward, and back up, relax, and bounce. And again, you don't want to move sway side to side. You just want to relax and very lightly with your legs. And you just push your feet into the ground. And it bounces. Try to feel your body shaking. You held out a note. Uh, 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 you can hear it bounce. And we're going to come to a stop. Now, forearm circle, bring your right hand up to the hip, straight out in front of you up to the shoulder height, bring it back into the shoulder at the same time, the left hand is the same thing. And two circles on either side of the body. And reverse, so up from the shoulder into the hip. And come to a stop. Sink all the way into the left leg. Take a small step out to the right. And right hand crosses the body, comes up to the face, turn, throw, throw it away, left hand comes up, same thing, and make it run smooth.
And if you put a step over the left leg, bring the right leg all the way in. Remember to keep the breath nice and natural and easy. <clears throat> right here from the diaphragm, go in through the nose. You can go out through the mouth or the nose, do not go in through the mouth. Okay, now, feet together, hands in front of the chest. Sit back, looking at the horizon. Come up and up. And come to a stop. All right. Turn out the right foot just a little bit. Take a small step out to the left diagonal. Hands come to chest level. I will here's where I'm gonna have to go a little askew, but give me a little more space so that you can see my feet. Look. Okay, so we're here, hands at chest level, shift forward, shift back, counterclockwise circle. In, back out, and now we go clockwise. And step in, in, back out, now continue clockwise. Step in, back out, back to counter. Hands down, bring your foot forward. Step back up to the beginning position. <coughs> From here, hands on this side, fingertips touching. Thumbs overlap at the first joint. Quickly, again, demonstrate that here. Did you see? Here. Stretch up. Have your fingertips over. Shoulder, waist, hip, knee. Knee, hip, waist, foot, center, and head up. And do the other side. Up, shoulder, waist, hip, knee, knee, hip, waist, and shoulder, center. I'm going to do both sides again. Up. Shoulder. Waist. Hip. Knee. Knee. Hip. Waist. Shoulder. Center. And up. Up. Shoulder. Waist. Knee, knee, hip, waist, and shoulder. Up. <clears throat> okay, last time, each side. Up, shoulder, waist, hip, knee, knee. Hunter. 
Last time. Up. Shoulder. Waist. Hip. Knee. Knee. Hip. Waist. Center. That concludes the Qigong warm-up. <coughs> now, let us do our San Sujin, or our silk reeling energy here. This is going to come in very handy today. So, Sum Mabu, your stance. Nice, comfortable, not too low, not too high. You don't want to be locked out up here i have a nice here you want to make it a little bit more difficult just sink into it however you want okay for demonstration purposes i will keep it right here in the middle okay start with our right hand or your left whichever you feel if you want to just mirror everything that i'm doing that's fine hold it here like this and then down up We'll call this our outer circle. Good. Switch your hands. Now, hand up, the inner circle. Switch. Now, both hands, we're going to do outer circle first. So, come up, one, Now, reverse it. <clears throat> Those are our basic circles. So that is our, that's basically how we're going to be moving on. All right. So when we are extending, we can extend with an outward circle like that. We can extend with an inward circle like that. 
either way, we're tying all of our movement to these particular things. Now, we've discussed a few of the, the things. So, um, we'll go through what we have now, the first four. It's going to include Lanzure, Breast of Earth's Tail, Breast of Earth's Tail, Lo Xiaomu, which means Brush Name Twist Step, like Down on Hulk, Monkey Stepping Back, and uh, uh, Flying Diagonally, or uh, Parting Horses Name. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so we'll go through these and then we're going to end on the show, which is Cloud Hands, and we'll discuss where everything sits. So, from the beginning position here, we're going to go into the brush of this thing. So, down. In. All right, next one. Brush knee. Shall we? So, monkey stepping back. We're going to grab the front hand, reach with the back hand, step back with this foot, step back with the other. Grab. <clears throat> Next one. <clears throat> Four months up. Party horses main. And Beta. Diagonal. 
We're just gonna, we'll do, we'll do both. So, do one of each. Start off from the diagonal. Okay, so there are, are four basic um, movements from Tai Chi. These, along with Yun Shou, have been combined to create pretty much everything you see in the forms. Um, and again, it all predicated on this right here. Now, you can make it more complicated by doing your yin and yang symbol in there if you want. This is a It's the same idea. You're just kind of switching from one to the other. Right? See? Here. But it's all predicated on this. Okay? So, the first one, Manchue, is stationary and it has to do a lot with keeping your structure. Right, so you're going to be in here like this, and the point of this is the principle we call boom. And boom translated often um, is translated as ward off. That's a very bad translation, um, it doesn't really kind of encompass it. Um, the problem is, it's an archaic character, so it's not in use anymore. Um, so it's not in any dictionary or anything like that. However, in old dictionaries it is in, I found once uh, somebody's uh, grandmother or aunt had, had an old Chinese dictionary from her time in school, and boom was in there, and it was described as the energy like you're carrying wood or books or something like that in your arms like this, right? Where you're holding it out suspended in this, in, in this, this way to carry. It's based, and then it's also used for buoyancy. And if you read the Chinese classics or the Taiji classics, you'll know that um, boom is also called, you know, points, the energy that lifts up a boat, right? Surface tension, you know, that kind of thing. So that's the energy there. We're trying to expand and keep our shape, right, and keep everything together. So all of these movements right here, right, happen on either side, on each side of the body, the push, all of that. And there's really, other than, you can find pieces of those circles, right, all over the place, but they're not really prominent. Now, that starts to change when you get into the next ones, which are dealing with movement. So let's talk about these four. Because what we have here is these, those last four are going to be kind of focused on here. You have two inner, two outer circles. So, monkey stepping back. Now, these are our inner circles, right? We feel this energy going on here. Okay. We do it in Tai Chi style. That corresponds to our brush knee, right? Directly. So the first one, brush knee, is one of our circles. So that's taken care of. Monkey stepping back is related to that because it's using those same circles. 
Okay? It's not pushing forward as you are stepping back. But that's but it's the same dynamic. Now, uh, when you get to flowing diagonally and parting horses main, now we're switching circles. <clears throat> because now we're going like this. And this, you see, is here. So while we're focusing this, this energy forward and backward at the same time. Remember we call this le to rend. Okay. That's our outer circle. Okay. Same thing here. Outer circle. Okay. So now the last one is the is essentially the namesake of the outer circle. Right? Um, so you have Brushni on one end, and you have Yun Shou or Cloud Hands on the other. Now, it may be weird that I, okay, so um, I call it Yun Shou instead of Cloud Hands because Cloud Hands is a, it's, it's obviously, a, it's a Chinese idiom that is often used in martial arts for things that go past your face. <clears throat> The, the character itself can mean to obscure or whatever, and that's probably what it has to, what it has to do with. I've never gotten a good explanation for that, but, but, but there it is. Yun Shou, however, is, just, is, is, its, is its name. We can just keep it there. Some people call it cloudy hands. Some people call it move hands like clouds. It is literally two words, cloud and hand. So I choose to just use the, the, the Chinese there. Um, Any hoot. Um, whereas some of the other ones have better, better, easier translations or equivalents in English. Um, Any hoot. So what we're doing here is we are really going to be maximizing this outer circle. This is what this entire move is based on. Um, whereas the two intermediates, um, uh, monkey stepping back and flying diagonally and parting which is main, they are taking their circles and kind of manipulating them a little bit so they're kind of halfway in between things. Here we are into the extreme double line hexagram type of stuff. Right, so this is the full on full circle. So this is clown hands. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be combining this with a step. The movement is this. Don't worry about anything like that. We're going to segment it into little techniques, but the movement still stays the same. Right? Just don't. Just know that these movements are in there. Try to hit these before getting too smooth to where you're just you're not really doing anything. Right? Just hit these little marks. So we're going to go through these. Little marks. So we're going to start with our feet together. We, you can start with your hand with, with your feet like this if you wish. I find it often easier just to start with your, your, your feet together. We are now going to be traveling side to side. Okay? So if you are doing this in a practice space that is narrow and long, the first bunch of, of lines are going to be very easy for you to do. But this last one, you'll probably have to turn 90 degrees and do it um, this way. Now. Even though we are going to be moving sideways in relation to where we've been moving before, this is one of our major techniques for advancing. Okay? And that's because we're in a nice line and we're basically inching forward here like that, keeping everything like this. So when we're doing this, we have to remember that these are front and back, not this and that. So, okay. We're going to start with feet together here. Okay. <clears throat> the first one here, we go like this. We turn to here. Extend that. Okay. Now we're going to scoop down and then we'll step out into a mob. Sit into that mob. 
with this hand, we're going to do a hooking motion with our thumb, like this, just by turning like that. Then we flip the hand over so that the edge of it is pointing that way. And we extend our hand. Turn. Same thing on that side. Once it, is, it hits its, its extension, we stand up, put feet together, scoop down again, step out, extend, and stand up. Now, when we reach the end of our space and we want to do the other side in the other direction, we're going to go here, we're going to omit the bow to go to the other side, and then we're going to do it on this side. Step out, extend, turn, extend, stand up, scoot down, step out, sit, extend, extend, stand up. And if you're at the end, again, Come out, cross the arms, step out like this. Come down to your ankles, up. And finish it up. Now, you can change the angles you want to go. Like if you, if you start off in your space going this way, and then you end up with cloud hands going this way, when you stand back up at the end of this, you can simply turn this way. And finish up that way. Um, so that's perfectly uh, permissible, as it were. Um, okay, let's make a quick check here. Have anything? All right, nothing, nothing as of yet. Um, okay, so let's talk about a little, a little bit quickly about um, where where this kind of all fits. Um, like I said, we have our first lunch away, our first brush the bird's tail, central equilibrium. We are learning how to stand and hold our ground. Um, it's a wrestling thing, so it's basically not letting the other person move us or whatever. Basically holding our ground and resisting, resisting our force. Um, with the with with the least amount of effort, right? That's always the, the the caveat to all of this is that you can you can do certain things um, successfully just because um, you can just er, overpower it and push through it. Um, it's better to reserve your energy. Can you do what's the what's the the least taxing way I can do this? You know, and we we try to use physics and body mechanics to. To do that, so that's our first one. Our our second one, brush knee, we're moving forward, right, and then we're moving backward with monkey stepping back. And then we're moving obliquely here, right. Okay, now it seems like we're moving side to side, right, and in a way we are. But remember what I said is reorient your your uh, front and back to this way and that way. And this, if you do any type of weapons, if you do lightsaber, if you do sword, um, anything like this, this is gonna this is gonna feel a little bit more um, at home to you, I think, um, because what we're really setting up is this. Right? Line myself up to the camera so you can see. There. I'm very, very narrow. I can get in here. I can cover myself. Like that. Let's see. Boom. You know, and 
going to, and I'm going side to side. Right? So I'm going front, back, front, back. Now, am I dealing with two separate attackers? Probably not. That's probably not the point. <laughs> the point is probably just to get a good balance on either side of the body. So that's really all you really you really need to to worry too much about. Um, so, so there's that. Um, other things with uh, cloud. Yeah, uh, Mabu. It's it's you're going to be you want to get nice and set in Mabu. Now the motion here it's just like in the in the warm ups, right? But here's the difference. When we're doing the warm-ups, what we're thinking about is when I turn this way, I'm coming here and my hand is coming up my center line. Right? And I'm, I'm doing this. And that's called beautiful woman admires herself in the mirror. Um, it's basically miming somebody looking at a looking glass in a hand mirror. Right? And going back and forth. So you generally go a little higher, right? So I go up here like this, and I kind of watch it. All right? But it's still exploiting that same mechanical process in the body. Right? This turning of the waist, the outer circle of the shoulder, right? You can see, obviously, it's here, expressed here. If you see Chen style, they do all kinds of stuff. Or, Right, it's it's coming off and over like that. Um, the when I come out strong like that, you have to have this grooved very well, so you're not pushing your way through it. Right, if I snap out, I have to be relaxed. But when I get to the end, <laughs> I have to so, I have to solidify it. Um, so there's that. Um, okay, so uh, the other thing here, and I can do this close before we move on and then finish up, is this cool hook. All right, as I come up, I hook like that. Let's see? All right, so when I come up here, boom, I hook. I turn there. Then this comes up, and I hook again. So you hook, turn, hook, and out. See? If I can line myself up correctly here, it goes pretty much right on your side. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have anything out there as far as questions? Does not look like it yet, so what I will do is let's go through the set. And up to the first clown hands, we should have uh, a little a little taste of everything in there, uh, with one exception. Um, but uh, most of the stuff we've we, we've got in here, so we'll go through it and then we can be. Um, all right, so I will turn around. Um, I'll do it back facing you so you can follow along. And then I'll do it once from the front so you can see what the hands are doing. <clears throat> okay. I'll do it at kind of a medium pace.
We'll, we'll stop it there. <clears throat> we'll go quite up there. So, yeah. Cloud hands. We'll just look here. I think. All right. So now, yeah. so you can see from the hands, same thing. Move us up some more space to go. All right. Oh, good. Got a little. Okay. And comment. Uh, keeping the center line in mind helps a lot. Yes. You always want to keep that that in mind, right? So that when you're turning, you're turning your center. Right. I don't want to just right. Go, go away from that because the further I go from the center the less strong this becomes right if you it, it, it's called a moment arm if you, if you look in, into that physical uh, concept as I move my arm out here like this the moment and moment arm gets bigger and I'm going to be if I've got forward forward pressure going back trying to push my arm out this way it's going to get the more difficult the further I go now, obviously right, but um, so when we, we try to orient everything from the center even when we turn to the side you see I want my my shoulder my hand and everything like that's attached to my center so everything's going through the center so it's either going in like that or it's coming in like this and going down into the to the uh, center of gravity. Um, <clears throat> that's the basic the basic theory, as it were. Um, okay. So um, that about does it for me today. We don't have any more questions or anything. Um, this last bit. Cloud hands is um, you're basically taking kind of like all of these concepts and mixing them together, right? So that when you're thinking about what you're using it for, you have to be thinking about lots of different things, not just one thing. So we're not thinking about somebody running up this way and somebody running up that way and us going, yeah, yeah. That's that's not the idea, right? However, if you think about in a martial sense for the people who are doing this for martial arts, right? If we think about how we're moving when somebody else is holding on to us, this stuff starts to become, you know, very, very uh, useful, right? And uh, hopefully people can kind of make those connections if they want to. Um, if you're not doing it for martial arts, if you're just doing it for 
health and fitness. Um, being able to interact with the environment requires that you be aligned with your center. And if you're going to push open a heavy door, get your center behind your behind the, the means that you're pushing. Um, if you're lifting anything, you try to put your center over, you know, in, in, in some way in, a, in opposition to the weight and you try to push into the ground through there. So much of this is intuitive, you know, but there you go. Um, all of this stuff has application um, in your daily life. Now, I say application, it kind of, it, it will happen automatically if you are being mindful of it in your practice. If you're being mindful of it in your practice, you don't have to be so mindful of it in real life. Because if you're being mindful of it in your practice, it's getting, it, it's getting hardwired into you. Right? Your nervous system and your motor cortex are adapting to these new, these new means of, of moving and, and stuff like that. And the body is always looking for homeostasis. So anything that you can do that reduces the tax on the system, it will naturally start to gravitate toward. Uh, the extreme example of this is break falling. Once you learn how to break your fall, um, on on a hard surface without injury or with you know minor injury on your hands or something like that, um, it it will come out automatically because it's a it's a strategy that your body once you do it successfully it logs it as wow that that is important I was able to fall and receive zero injury that is what I'm going to do from now on and it starts to make the changes in your neurons and your your pathways to help you um, for, for it to become a habit, right? Um, the more stress there is on the system and the, the more that is decreased from that particular uh, skill probably is the determining factor on how quickly or easily you learn it, right? Protecting yourself from falling, very useful. Um, it's going to, your body's going to latch onto that pretty quick for things that have less of a consequence. It might take a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, yeah. And, uh, yes, the uh, brake falling and all of that, uh, uh, slipping on ice. Somebody mentioned here, um, all of that. I've had many occasions where my feet have slipped out from, from me on concrete and I was able to break my fall without a serious injury. So um, if you are physically able to take break falling lessons, um, and what I mean by break falling lessons is not just the rollouts and not just the, 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 the tucks and, and, and that kind of thing, but there's a whole system of, of literally breaking your fall, basically hitting the ground before you hit the ground. Um, and learn, learn, if you can, learn those, because those are very, very useful. Um, but obviously, uh, there's a physical limitation to it. You do run the risk of, of injuring yourself during the learning curve. So um, keep that in mind. Um, yes, and always always check with a physician to see if you're if you're suitable for for any particular type of activity, um, especially the really strenuous ones, the ones that you're risking um, some sort of, of injury with. Anyway. Uh, I will leave it there for today. We will um, see everybody uh, hopefully next week. I th I believe um, I might do might be able to get over to uh, the space a couple of times. Um, have a little bit more room to uh, to move around in. But uh, other than that, uh, everything will be. Moving like this until the foreseeable future um, when well, this craziness uh, subsides. So, from all of us here, uh, we will wish you a good day. Uh, stay healthy and happy. Um, wash those hands. Keep that social distance. Do your part. Um, we will see you later. Signing off.